did. <laughs> You're... Hi everyone, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Holly. Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Anne. We are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey y'all, happy Wednesday. We're having a little bit of a confusion here because we said go live and yeah, we're looking at some playback, but I don't know what you're seeing right now. <laughs> We are here live, ready for a Wednesday with you, and we have a fun tutorial. We see a lot of you already checking in and saying hi, and thank you so much for being here. So if you're getting a repeat, we don't know if it's the delay repeat. We have no idea what's happening right now, but oh here's what I'm going to tell you. We have a fun tutorial planned for you today. We're going to do some quick show and tells, and hopefully it's not double play on your side. Anyway, y'all, let's we're going to get started and first up, Fairy Ann is going to do a little show and tell for us, right? Yes. Okay. Hi friends, we wanted to share some lovely purples and berries with you today for our Valentine's project. This is our MC1 Purples and Berries Studio Pack. I'm going to start right up here at the top. This is MC, MC1 Berry, True Violet, Boysenberry, Pomegranate, Powder Pink, and Blueberry. The MC1 Studio Pack is going to come with one ounce in each of these colors. And just so you can see what an ounce of the MC1 fiber looks like. Da 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 da. <laughs> Look at all the Valentines you can make. <laughs> all right, we hope you love these colors as much as we do, and Miss Hannah has something fun to share with you. Thanks, Anne! Yay! Hey, everybody, how are y'all doing today? So, today I'm going to be showing y'all our Fairy Hollow Specialty Designer Pack. The specialty designer packs are fun little packs that have a little bit of almost every fiber that we have available here at the store. They're great for wet felting. Um, some projects for needle felting this might be really good for. One of them would be the mismosh trees that we did a few months ago, I believe. But those use some of the bling fiber to create really cool texture in a needle felted project. So that might be something fun to check out. For this, uh, for this pack, we've got a variety of colors. We'll start with the MC1. We've got pomegranate, bamboo, and indigo. We've got merino top. We've got five colors of the merino top. We've got kiwi, violet, ballerina, raspberry, and larkspur. And then we've got two silk blends in here. We've got French lavender as well as honeydew silk blends. And then for the fun bling fibers, we got a whole bunch. We've got kiwi, sorry, silk waist. On the wool neps, we've got tulip and onion. We have got the Lotus Blossom Bamboo Top is one of my favorites. I love bamboo top. And then what else we got in here? We got Primrose Viscose, some Iris Tussa Silk, Lavender Hankies, and then I think, oh, and of course the Angelina. You can't forget the Angelina, the Watermelon Angelina. So that's a fun little pack full of lots of Lots of fun texture and fun colors. I hope y'all enjoy. Thank you. It's, and I it's getting lots of love. Oh, good. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of my favorite ones to make too. It's so much fun to make the specialty designer belt. Says, this fairy fiber pack speaks to my soul. Oh, good. Lisa, that makes us happy. Lisa says, "I'm always amazed you all can remember all the color names." I never <laughs> thought it would be possible, but yeah, <laughs> it is. Who makes up the names? I've always wondered. <laughs> I think it's a little bit. Uh, all of us putting in our two cents and and just chit chatting about it. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I got Miss Holly coming up next for y'all. Thanks, Holly. Woo -woo. Hi. Okay, so Valentine's is my favorite crafting holiday, and I love our wool felt sheets. So today I'm going to show you. This is our new bundle of wool felt sheets. It's called Bundle of Love. Marie's going to be using some of these in her project today. We've got six great colors, pinks and reds and purples, um, and I can't wait to see what you guys are going to make out of it. I know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll get on it, and I'll have something to show you next week. <laughs> and now we have Kayla. Yay. Thanks, Holly. Mm -hmm. Deb says she loves the colors. 
Awesome. Hi again, everybody. If some of the colors you saw or packs inspired you, we did add a new tab onto our website that has all sorts of Valentine's goodies on it. It's got, I can show these lovely colors here if you're inspired by these. Everything from our pre felt to merino top, MC1 bats, and even some silk blends are hiding in there too, can all be found on that tab. And because it is getting closer to, well, it will be Valentine's Day soon. Do you know why skeletons can't play football? <laughs> who, who can't play football? Skeletons. Why can't skeletons? No. Because their hearts aren't in it. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. Alrighty. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's all I got. I'll let Marie get on with the show. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Yeah. Thank you, Kayla. Yay to all the fairies. Aren't they amazing? And thank you all for being here. I was just reading you. You all chiming in. Thank you so much. So if you're brand new to the show, say you're new right there in the, the chat window. If you are watching the playback, feel free to leave your comments down below because we will read them. We hope that you will consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified every time we go live. And today we have a very special project we are going to be working on a Valentine's but I want or I'm strongly encouraging that this Valentine's is for you that this is a Valentine's the first Valentine's you make this year be one for you and I'll delve a little more into that you know the depth behind that as we work together but just it's just something to consider and that's what we're going to be doing together today. So I don't have a finished project to show you because this is going to come, this is going to be a felt along. We're going to felt together today. But what I'd like to do is um, just turn down here and show you some of the supplies that are on my table. And then we're going to do a quick demonstration of a few types of hearts. So if you've been following us for a little while or you've checked out our channel or even our website, some, you'll find that some of these things are even already available. So behind me, hanging up here, is um, our heart and bead garland, or dangler, I like to call it, because it hangs straight down. You can do, you know, make a garland for it this way, or hang it straight down. And these are called our puffy hearts. So these are multi-dimensional and thick. And we did a tutorial a few years back on that, and we also have a PDF that you can download, and I just call it the puffy hearts. So that's a video you can check out. Also, uh, felting the beads that go in this. You can needle felt your beads or you can wet felt your beads. So we have a video for how to wet felt beads fast. You'll find that a fast felting wool will do pretty well, especially something like our Merino short fiber bats. But there is a video for how you can needle felt a bunch of beads fast. And then I'll show you how you can um, string those up and what kind of string I like to use. And then over here we have another uh, version of a little heart garland. Go garland or yeah, it's kind of a garland. I've used uh, wooden hearts in this. The littlest guys are the puffy hearts, and I'll do a quick partial demonstration of that for you today, so that if you're interested to check out that video, it's a little primer. And then this is also a puffy heart, and then a cookie cutter heart. And a cookie cutter heart is like one of our first videos that would be like 10 years ago now <laughs> we didn't even know how to run our, our channel at all um, but needle felting a cookie cutter heart is one of the things we're going to use today but we're going to build on that and, and just have some fun and, and play so i think that we we will share some links in the chat window and then once we're all done we'll share it in the description as well so let's just have a look here at some of the things that we're going to be playing with today Okay, so the first thing I have here is some MC1 batting, and I've just chosen a variety of colors. These were in the uh, part of the mix that Anne shared, um, and here, let me just bear with me here, y'all. Okay, so here we have some MC1 batting in a variety of colors. I also brought in some orange and green for people who aren't feeling pinks and purples and reds. And um, I made a green heart and it fell out of my bag on the way here, but I have an orange one to share with you. And you might even decide to bring in something a little shiny. This is just some Tessa silk. And I'll show you if you want to blend that into your top coat, how you can do that. So that's just some MC1 fiber for you. I have just a variety of yarns. Uh, this is just someone asked me last time what 
do what is art yarn and I just call novelty yarns art yarns so if you go to the yarn store they might call these novelty yarns and in some knitting shops they're kind of out of fashion so you might find them like in the sale bin go get them the sale is totally fun this is like a mohair and who knows what else maybe bamboo fiber yarn um, just some ribbon and then this is the string that I like to um, string through when I'm making a garland or something it's really strong you can't break it and I think it's like a cotton number 10 so you'll find that probably just in your regular craft store then the other things I'm bringing in are just some embroidery floss now if you have embroidery floss just like this sometimes it gets all tangled up so I like to put mine on little bobbins or if you don't have bobbins, you could use even felt or cardstock or whatever. So this is basically all we're going to be working with um, today is just some odds and ends, except I'm going to bring in some fabric and a few more pieces. And what I'm going to do is share with you just the Valentine that I'm making for me. And uh, maybe you would like to play and make one for yourself too. Cool? Cool. Everyone cool. is loving these colors. <laughs> There's so much inspiration going on. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to, well, the first thing we're going to do is look at how to do a couple of these simple hearts, and then we're going to jump to some hearts that are a little more um, built out for you. So let me try and get, get my stuff out of the way and not on the camera if I can. Um, let's see. I was going to start this. So let's just look at how to make a cookie cutter heart so here's one that I started and I'm just gonna show how to do this real fast for anyone who's never done this before and I think since that time that a bunch of videos have probably popped up um, have probably popped up on how to do cookie cutter hearts which is cool um, and I'm just gonna give you a couple of tips if this is your first time doing that so when you have your heart you, and keep in mind you can make your heart thin or thick and you can also make it tapered towards the edges and I'm going to show you that with a bigger one I have in just a minute this is our batting this is our MC1 batting if you've never worked with it uh, the first time you do you'll know why we love it so much but if you're going to needle felt a heart like in a cookie cutter you just want to fill that cookie cutter all the way um, it's really especially with the batting it's really lofty and you just want to pack it. Now what you can do is uh, fill these things in layers. So once you have your first layer going, um, and I'm just going to work with like, this is a 38 spiral to start. Um, once you have your first layer going, you just want to start tacking it down and tack along the rim. Tack along the rim so that you kind of get that outline. And don't even worry about it looking correct or smooth at this stage what you can do is keep adding layers and you can even cover up kind of a junky layer with one you know smooth top coat so like when you get to this point and you've taken out some of that air now you can just put another layer right on top so you can make these things just as thick as you want using cookie cutters. I made emojis using cookie cutters. <laughs> I've seen some pretty fun emojis using cookie cutters. You know, and it doesn't matter if you're an experienced felter or a beginning felter, the, the technique you use, as long as it works and it's fun for you. You know, there's just nothing wrong with using templates. Sewists use templates <laughs> and patterns all the time. And this is just a quick way to get a nice, firm, a nice shape. So the quick tips, if you've never used a cookie cutter, are if you keep your needle and I'll just uh, let's see if we can just zoom in a little bit here keep your needle tip below the rim if you constantly lift your needle out, up above the rim then you're more likely to bang into it and bend a needle if you bend a needle it's gonna break eventually or it's definitely not gonna be as effective as you want so keep your needles below the rim if you can and keep your shape in place until you're done until you're really ready to remove it because it's hard to get those trailing fibers underneath back in now you'll hear that I'm really attaching it to the foam but I am using my fine needles and I'm not driving it you know to the center of the foam and definitely not to the opposite side you'll see that this top is all bumpy here 
And I think what's really fun is what the underneath side looks like when you, when you lift it up. When you lift it up, that side's like a little fuzzy, but in some ways smoother because it's not had the compaction. It's only been pounded to underneath. That's why like when we needle felt purses over a form or hats over a form, as you peel up each layer, it's the part that was touching the foam is always smoother because it's not taking that direct hit. So this is kind of what it looks like as you build it. And this one is not very thick. So you can make them thick, thin, or even tapered. I'll, I'll tell you how to make the tapered. I'll bring in a bigger one. So when you're ready to take it off, and this one I'd probably, you know, fill or do a few more times. But when you're ready to take it off, you're just going to want to peel it off your foam. Now, if you get it off and you see, like, these parts aren't to your satisfaction, you can try and put your piece back in place. See, it's a little tricky to get it on there. And then make sure you go around and get all of those edges. It's just easier with the shape in place. So that's just a quick how to do a cookie cutter. You're going to peel it off and then look how cute like this side is. It's fuzzy and it's all smooth. And I would still needle felt this. I'm using my 42 cluster. I would still need to felt this and get it all flat, and I would go around and work all of the edges. Uh, and I would keep mine in this shape a little bit longer, but this is just sort of the quickie, quickie method. You can, um, you're, you're going to figure it out once you get started how to use the cookie cutter. What color are you working with? Oh, this is boysenberry. This is boysenberry. And we have a lighter version, which is also called, called sugar plum. They're both really, really cute. So you can needle fill your hearts with a cookie cutter. You could use a, um, a paper template. And you can also use the fold method. This big sort of like orange cream 50-50 <laughs> bar, this 50-50 bar heart was made with um, actually I just made a big block and I just used paper templates. I just cut up uh, cardstock and you'll see that it's not the same shape and that's because if you, you use this like we did with our wings, if you watched our tutorial from last week, the Waffa Birds, in between two pieces of paper is whatever you make this shape, the piece is going to ultimately be smaller because you've got to get all that fluff to something solid. So this is a really solid little heart. And all I did was basically needle felt your heart however you want. The foldy method, which we have the video for. Um, and let me show you real fast how we do the foldy method. Without needle felting it, I'm going to show you. I'll use this same one, and I'll make a little one. So we start with a strip. It's kind of like paper, paper toys you made when you were kids. So we have just a long strip. If you ever made played houses or something like that, you fold over this triangle, this triangle, this triangle. And basically what we do is we force a puffy triangle out of the wool so that we get density. And so then I'll needle felt this shape into a heart. That's how we like to do it. And I do like to make them dense. It's one of those things because you often hear me say if there's a bunch of air and gas in it, it's going to take longer, you know, to make it dense. And that same thing is true with this, these guys. So you have to kind of go around and shape all the edges early on. But you want to get it a little more dense before you, you know, form that peak too much. So make your little packet into a nice, even triangle, and then you'll start to shape your heart out of this just by once you get it dense then you'll just start to poke it in here and shape all those points. Lori says, yes I have been using that cardstock tip and my fingers thank you. Oh <laughs> that's good, that's good. Okay so that's this is the the quickie quickie how we get to the, the puffy hearts. But remember to felt your stuff so that it's really nice and solid. The reason you want it nice and solid is, is one that it holds up you know, to whatever love it gets over the years and appreciation of, of people picking it up. But also, if you are going to want to string up your hearts or turn them into a magnet or do something like that, you want them to be able to take that needle going through them or the, the string going through them. So this heart is very, very dense. And we could actually poke a hole in this and turn it into, you know, something that hangs. Um, so let me see, 
I have an all, which is something you really want to have in your stash. And let me poke through. Where's this other one? Here's a loose one just to show you. So this thing is, is really loose and not very well felted. And if I poke my awl through it, it's kind of, it's kind of easy to do. But it's also, the, the piece just isn't really all that well formed. But nonetheless, if you want to string something, you can poke through it with an awl. Or you can just run string through the piece. So if I want to, to poke a hole in this, I can. And I can poke it with an awl. So don't leave these around, you know, for the little ones. But if you want to string this up on something, that's what I would suggest to do. If you want to run like a thick ribbon through it, then use an awl and make a nice thick hole and run it through there. Now, if you want to hang this thing, if you want it to spin, then get yourself a little jump ring like a key ring uh, and tie your string to this so that it will actually spin. It'll spin a little bit better if you want it to spin, like hanging in a car or, or something like that. So, um, and then the last thing I want to show you on this little heart before we jump to our own Valentine that we're working on is that you can embroider these if you want. And even if you don't feel like you know how to embroider or that's not something necessarily comfortable for you, you can just do something like a straight stitch. Now, you have to hide the knot, so it may be coming through the back. But you can hide a, a single stitch or even some by just running your, um, by putting a little bit of wool over the top. How's everybody doing? Are we doing okay? Kathy shares my favorite colors favorite crunching sound combined with a fun, easy project, does it get me better? <laughs> fun. Okay, so I tell you what, I'm going to go on the white here because that's just, that's just a little more visible. But you can just come straight up the back there and you can just embroider right on the face of this. You could do something simple like a, a running stitch. You could do French knots, you know. There's umpteen you know videos and resources available for embroidery but I just want to encourage you you know you can do something besides just wool on wool you can do something besides just wool on wool and have fun with that I'm going to stitch this around so I want to tell you go ahead Ann you got a question somebody yeah, mm -hmm. about how much wool would it take to make a heart about that I, you know what I tell you what we'll wait here in just a minute I want to say it's probably less than an ounce or maybe an ounce. I'm not sure. I didn't weigh it, and I probably should have. So while I'm doing this, I want to tell you all uh, just a little bit about today's project. The reason I'm encouraging you to do a Valentine for yourself is because I think it seems like we spend so much. We, we will give a lot to other people, and sometimes we just don't take the time to give to ourselves. Get yourself a massage. Get, get your nails done or your hair done or buy yourself a treat or even just give yourself a compliment. I think it's really hard for people to accept a compliment. And one of the things that my husband, Rodney Jean, who is watching, if you see him on here, shout out to Rodney Jean, has done is just been a constant source of love and support for me and really, really taught me how to appreciate myself. And a couple of years back, I don't know how many now, Rodney's gonna have to tell me, we did a CD together. He's a musician of many, many talents. And that CD was full of affirmations. I think we gave away like over a thousand of them. Um, and so gave away and sold over a thousand of them. And on that CD were affirmations for creativity. And um, so as part of that project, I did these little fabric, not part of that project, but I maybe inspired by that project, I did um, some fabric collages. And I'll just zoom in here a little bit. Um, I did fabric collages, and on those fabric collages, I did some quotes. And those quotes, now this, is, this was like my rough model, but I did fabric collages, took pictures of them, and then I made these little blocks. So these blocks say, I deserve the very best of life, or for all that I have and all that I am, I am grateful, or I nourish my creativity and encourage my greatness, things like that. And these are sayings that you could just decide whatever you wanted your saying to be for the day, you know, and look at that saying or whatever message you needed to hear. 
But affirmations are something that absolutely impacted my life, whether I carried them in my pocket or had them, you know, on something like this little block. So my encouragement today is that you consider making a Valentine for yourself. And I have a little suggested um, project for us. So I'm going to set this one aside. And what I have here is a heart that I needle felted from a really fun cookie cutter. I can't believe I didn't bring the name. I got this cookie cutter off Amazon. Isn't it pretty? This company, um, I should look up the name. It, it, they, I think they do dog biscuits <laughs> and <laughs> cookie cutters. But anyway, it's such a sweet cookie cutter. And the difference between this cookie cutter heart and the other ones I showed you is you might be able to, you might not be able to see, but it's a little bit tapered on the side. So I made a whole level just like we did and needle felted it down and then I piled in while leaving a perimeter so that it could be just a little bit a little bit tapered and a little bit puffy and you could just take that as far as you want to go and then I cut this heart uh, from from the same shape the cookie cutter so I want to give you a quick tip with this that I think some of you will appreciate um, sometimes it's hard for us to get the outline or design that we want on um, onto a dark color or a strong color felt so I have a couple of suggestions for you on that. I'll bring in this same color that I have. And uh, my tools, let me just dig my tools out here. I should get a roly chair. What you got, Ann? Angel says, love the idea of your block. We just don't appreciate ourselves. <laughs> so much. And so this I hope that you will use as an idea for making your own Valentine. Um, it, with the same idea as the block. That's what it, this is basically is. So on this felt, there's two ways that I have that you can get a nice outline on a dark piece of felt. So one is uh, Taylor's chalk, and it's readily available. And Taylor's chalk will mark on this felt really well. And if you don't want to see the mark, well, then you can always use the back. Now this is an asymmetrical heart, so the only thing to keep in mind is if your design is asymmetrical, then you'd want to do it upside down, you know, depending on how you want to use it. So I went around the outside with the Taylor's chalk, and then the inside with my Prismacolor colored pencil, just so you can see another way to achieve a, a getting a nice outline on a dark piece of fabric if you want to get a good shape and cut it out. Stacy asks, can you put essential oils on the felted hearts? Oh, uh, sure. Sure you can. So I did, this one is the, here's the colored pencil. Can you see that mark? Does it show up for you guys there? And then here is the Taylor's chalk, a little bit softer. Um, so I just used yellow. So that's just a suggestion. If you're trying to get a shape or cut something out, jump to Taylor's chalk or uh, a waxy style colored pencil which is the these are the Prismacolor premieres and that works really well so then from there I cut my shape out of my heart right here okay so what we want to do I want to do is um, decorate this heart just a little bit and um, we can use our we can use some of our embroidery floss. So I'm going to be putting this heart and this heart together. And then I have a little saying here um, that I want to include too. And it's one of the, the little quotes I gave you and it says, I have the creativity and the ability to create anything I truly desire. So if you, I'm going to do a little layer here and put this on this. This is a printable paper. We don't sell this, I'm just sharing it with you. Who knows how old this packet is I have, but it's called Sew In Color Fast Fabric Sheets for Inkjet Printers. And you know, you could turn that into an iron-on if you want, um, using something like a heat and bond if you want to make it an iron-on, or you can just stitch it on. And then you can um, print it onto this paper, which is like a fabric paper. So this is what it looks like on white paper. And then this fabric paper that I'm using is like a vanilla color. Um, and I made the, letter, the lettering in green because green is the color of your heart chakra. Not to get too woo on you, but <laughs> it's the color of your heart chakra. So uh, that's where you're speaking from, especially if, when you say you know, good things about yourself. And then this paper has a little backing on it 
that you can just peel off and that makes it like a nice little piece of fabric. So even if you want to make your own little tags for something, you know, the paper's expensive, but you can use it for things like that. If you're doing tons of stuff, you should have your tags made. But um, if you're just doing a few things, you could always make your own tags if you want. Says, I love that so much. Claire says, what a lovely gift this is going to make. <laughs> I hope the first one's for you. Okay, let's see. Oh, I thought I strung this up. I didn't. Okay, so uh, I want to sew this onto my heart, and I have some embroidery floss here that uh, is like a six strand, and to get a piece out to, you know, sew with it, all you have to do is just pull it straight out. So you don't have to try and untangle it. Just pull it straight out and then we can just sew that onto our heart. So I'm going to um, kind of get this going. So I'd love to hear from you either in the comments, if you're watching the playback, or the chat box if you're here with us now, if you think that this is a project that you would do, is make a little valentine for yourself. I would love to know. I broke my thread already. Linda and Alice say that when they make theirs, they're going to do, they're going to add some, sew some beads on there. Oh, yeah. Some people do, are, are good with beads, and I'm not really good with beads. I don't know why. I always just lose ideas, but I love that. Some people are good with beads. Somebody for sure is going to put locks on there. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to tie a little knot so that I can um, stitch it on there, and then we can add a few embellishments as well. Darlene, Allie, Pam, and Kathy are all saying that they're going to chime in and do it. Angie is making herself one right now. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and Iva's working on hers right now. That's awesome. I love that. So w what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in sort of a little mounting for it here in a minute. But I'm just going to do little stitches in the corners. I thought about doing X's, but... Um, I, I just cut it out wonky because I didn't want it to be a perfect square. And the fun thing is that since this is for you, if you make the first one for you, then, you know, you can just do whatever speaks to you. I can't. <laughs> I'm sure that watching me thread this, uh, this on here is just painful. It is for me, too. Okay, let's see if I can keep it together. Together! All right. So I'd also love to hear maybe what, what colors y'all would use. Ooh, that's a good one. This, um... This back is not going to show, and you could uh, glue it onto your wool heart. Um, you could make your, you know, your heart much bigger than I've made mine. You can um, stitch it on there, whatever speaks to you. You know, you can attach it, uh, you know, with like a single button, so that it just looks cute. I should have brought a button. Okay, so I'm going to stop this right here. And this is like my little, this is like a little talisman, if you will, or a little affirmations heart. What, what, st how, what started this is I bought a little shadow box at the craft store that I'll, I'll bring in here in a minute, and I thought it'd be really fun for us to maybe, uh, I don't know, quarterly or seasonally um, change what we put in our little shadow box this season, you know, like do a few shadow box, uh, a few shadow box projects. Okay, so sorry that took me forever. I know you wish I had recorded that on video. Okay, so this is, this is the start of that, and I will tie that off. And then also I'm going to put in some um, green and stuff too. But let's bring in some of these, these yarns. Why not? So if you're like me and maybe attracted to big yarns or fun art yarns, but uh, you don't really knit or you just keep telling yourself you're going to knit and you don't, you might consider getting some of these big fun hanks and just cut the thing in half. Cut it in half and then pull out whatever yarns you like or that speak to you. I know it's going to allow me to share some uh, with the gals today because they liked this yarn when they saw it. So this way you can buy a big something and then maybe share with your girlfriends or boyfriends or kids or whomever, whomever you like to craft with. So I'm just going to pull a few out, for example, and I think I'm just going to have some, I want some like trailing down on mine, just hanging off. Patricia says, I will make these for myself and for my grandsons to keep in their desks at school. They love felting and would appreciate it. <laughs> the sentiments on the hearts are so lovely. That's so cute. How old are your grandsons? That just sounds so sweet. This is all I really want to do is like have a little texture hanging down. Nothing too, nothing overly specific. And maybe I will 
bring in my green there too. Darlene shares she's going to make her heart in blue and purple. Marla's going to use lavender. Haley Marie's going to use yellow. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Yellow, lavender. You know what I'm going to do is I think I was going to stitch green on there and orange, and maybe I'll go back and do that later, but we'll jump forward to this, and um, I'm going to add a little bit of green right in there. Mm hmm Vicky's going to add some buttons to hers, and Anne's going to make hers in sorbet and tulip. Oh, that sounds so fun. I can't wait to see these. You know, now, last week we did the Waffa Birds, um, and for those of you who missed that, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. And Waffa just stands for Wild and Free Fiber Art, or Whimsical and Fun Fiber Art. And we are just blown away by the number of birds we have seen you all make over the last week. It's been really, really fun and they are brilliant <laughs> like they're just so more than I could have even asked for just like s delightful and you can share those in our group uh, Living Felt Friends which is on Facebook um, and I just decided to keep this pretty simple so what I'm going to do is trail this down and cut these off and all I was really looking for is some is a little texture in there for me so now we can um, sew that on with whatever way you like why not it's a good reason to bring in the orange mm -hmm. cool are, are those yarns 100 percent wool no no these are just embroidery floss you know pick it up at the at the craft store these oh those yarns that I put on top no that's why I call them novelty yarns who knows what they are they're just they're just yarns I got at the sale bin at the uh, at the knitting store, so I really did get them on sale. So go to the go to the sale bin. You it might it might be like an expensive yarn sometimes, but it's gonna last you a long long time and would give you something to share. Great for wrapping presents and stuff like that too. Okay. So this is mine, kind of kind of foofy. And then, actually, I think I'm going to just stitch it. Now, I wanted to kind of off-center it somehow on my, on my heart a little bit. And you can do the same kind of tacking like we did with, with this. Or you could be really organized about it, too. Um, and you could also glue it. I think I'm just going to have a little fun and just do a couple of stitches in a couple of places. It might be fun to come back and do some X's and O's, but I'm going to start with just an X. Could you use sari silk on the heart? Oh, sure. You could use you could use sari silk, um, like sari silk waste. You mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Um, if you want to blend in some other fibers, if you're needle felting, you're going to want to blend it with whatever fibers you have. You know, it it can help because sari silk is kind of resistant to the needle. You know, silk is amazing stuff. It has this amazing sort of tensile strength. I was watching this uh, show the other day. It was actually on Japan, and a lady was playing an instrument, and the strings were made out of silk. And I thought, you know, that just goes to show how strong silk really is, that the strings can be made of silk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Patricia responded back, her grandsons are 6 and 11. How sweet. Sweet, especially even that the 11-year-old would, you know, still have, that's got to speak to how sweet the family is, <laughs> you know, that he would put that in his drawer. I love it. Okay, so this is pretty simple, and I'm pretty simple, and um, not too fancy, but um, also I like, these are some of my favorite colors if you can't tell by the Living Felt logo, magenta and orange. <laughs> throw, in, throw in some blue in there. So I'm going to keep my Valentine pretty simple, but let me show you what I have to kind of round this out. Uh, Darlene says, this is making me want to go crazy with this. <laughs> okay, so this is what I saw when I was at the, um, I was at Michael's. I went in to get something. I don't know what it was, but I found this cute shadow box and it was on sale. You know, you got to go to these places when there's there's stuff on sale. And it's actually a pretty decent little shadow box. I thought this would probably be good to get one or two of these for a good seasonal change out. 
you know, if you want to change out. And look at, at how nice it is. It's got, it came with these pins in it, so they have, it does have permanent dents. You probably can't see that, but it's got like a faux linen background. So if you wanted, you know, you could just put your heart, you know, right on that, right on that background, and, and that would look pretty. And you don't have to sew to use fabrics. I have two, um, these are quilting squares, like a fat quarter, and all I did was iron it into this shape. You can iron it and use a heat and bond, or you could just iron it and wrap it like all the way around. I think I'm going to off center this, but maybe I thought it would be fun to do something a little more like that. And just, and then what it does is it almost creates space that you can add other little words or tokens or a gift or a charm, you know, maybe something that somebody has given you or something that's really special to you. I think I'm going to do it this way though because I see that it feels like this right pocket where the, these things are hanging down could use a little offset. So then get it all lined up however you want it and you don't even have to permanently affix it to the back. You can fold these around and cut them after um, but you want to pin this thing down. Let me do that. I'm just going to use a pin and um, pin him to the back so that it's there. And I'm not even going to tack this other stuff down. I'm just going to flip it all over. Princess says, when you go into Michael's, you always come out with more than you were with. Oh, my God. <laughs> I laughed because I used to go to those stores all the time when we had our first shop. And I would cut all these off. But let me just sh seal this up for you to see. And I found that I could never get out of there without spending like something like 100 or $120. But I would go back and back and back. So it was like that was my threshold. I thought, why not just spend it all? the first time. <laughs> so that's my little shadow box. I need to go in there and, and tighten up. I'll tighten up uh, this fabric right here so he lays nice and flat and then you can cut them all off or make it however you want. Um, you can pin those down, seal them down or whatever, but this is my encouragement to all of you is that Maybe you'll just take a few moments this week and before you make a Valentine or your next gift for anybody else that you just make one for yourself and let it be something that encourages you and supports you and just remind you how amazing you are because you know we were talking before the show and we don't all have someone in our life to do that but you have you and I know that's kind of mushy but really I mean it <laughs> I mean it I mean it and I have Rodney Jean to thank for all my mushiness because <laughs> he's just made me sweeter over the years so this is my little Valentine for me and I hope you'll make one for you whatever it looks like and that you'll share it in our group Living Felt Friends if you like this I hope that you'll um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. What we're going to do now is give away prizes. We always give away prizes at the end. Anne has been collecting names of people um, to draw names from and we always like to do a little giveaway at the end of every show. So I'm going to read some of your uh, some of your comments. Jackie says double-sided stick tape will work very well. I love that. And um, actually Kayla's mom gave me some. Her mom makes leather purses, amazing leather purses. So I think I'll try that too. Maureen McGinnis says Rodney Jean is the best. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> uh, Kim Van Wardenberg says she's going to make one for someone who made something for me. That is beautiful. Really, really is. And loved you too, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. I know this is a really simple project and not a whole bunch of felting, but you know, you're not just a felt maker and you're not just a mom and you're not just a whatever, you know, a bank vice president or <laughs> I don't know, a bowler or whatever. You're so many things and I hope that you'll make something for yourself. Allie says she started hers. Uh, Paola says she would like to do one for hers. Cindy King says I love prizes. <laughs> Kelly says this is great. That's awesome y'all. Thank you so much. So the fairies are back. Come on in. We're going to give away some prizes. Anne's got her magic hat and uh, yeah. Oh, that's super cool. cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what we did today. Is that great? Okay come in. So we're going to draw some names. Alrighty, mm -hmm. who's going first? I Holly? guess I am. <laughs> Cindy King. Yay! Yay! Cindy literally just wrote, I love prices. Oh, well, <laughs> <to get two. laughs> Congratulations, especially when you get one. Awesome. Do you want to hold it all? Alrighty, get in there. I always feel like I'm 
people think I'm cheating if I'm holding it and I'm drawing names, but I'm not. <laughs> Ali Tori. All right, <laughs> Allie, awesome. Okay, one more, Alrighty. one more. Okay, <laughs> get on in there. Didn't even, didn't even pretend hesitation with that. <laughs> Claire Richards. Yay, Claire! All right, so Anne's going to tell you about our prizes. Yes, our prizes today. You can pick whichever you want from the following. Prize number one is the bundle of love felt sheet. So cute. Bundle, the yes. worst, if, if the bundle's in there twice, I keep thinking that I'm... <laughs> bundle of love bundle. felt sheet bundle. There it is. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So this or... This or an MC1 studio pack. Nice. Oh. So if we drew your name and you aren't already our customer, welcome to the family, because now you are. If we don't, that means if we don't have your name in our customer database, just email us at customerservice at livingfelt.com or you can call us at 877-665-5790. Give us all your information and we'll mail these right out to you. In the meantime, we hope that you will share your Valentine to yourself or anyone in our group and we look forward to seeing you next week. We have a very special project so make sure that you hit the bell and hit the subscribe button and we will see you then bye y'all bye, bye.